Today we're going to be talking about association mapping and how GAPIT can be used to conduct these studies. So GAPIT stands for Genome Association Prediction Integrated Tool. So to start out, let's talk about association mapping. So what is association mapping? Well, it's an examination of a genome-wide set of genetic variants in different individuals to see if any variant is associated with a trait. The requirements for association mapping are genetic markers, phenotypic trait data, a diverse and large population of individuals, and an analysis of the population structure of the panel you're working with. Association mapping has been applied to humans, animals, plants, and many other organisms. However, there are some limitations to association mapping, which includes the fact that detecting associations can be dependent on population structure, and if population structure is not taken into, a, into account, it can lead to false marker associations. Another limitation is that it requires a large number of markers. So how does association mapping work? Well, first off, it uses thousands of single nucleotide polymorphisms, known as SNP markers, to identify differences in the phenotypic trait of an individual. Then, it uses the location of these SNP markers, where individuals possess possessing the desired trait have a different allele frequency than those without the desired trait. Then all SNPs across the entire genome can be plotted against the negative logarithm of the association p-value, which is also known as a Manhattan plot. So here's a representation of, an, of a Manhattan plot. As you can see, along the x-axis is the chromosome, and then across the y-axis is the negative logarithm of the p-value. You can see over here at chromosome 19, there's likely an association between this area on the genome and the desired trait. A LOD threshold value can be plotted on the y-axis here, so anything above the threshold value indicates that there's likely an association. So the focus of this tutorial will be on association mapping in crop plants. So why association mapping is useful in crops is that marker data has immediate implications in plant breeding, and this includes marker-assisted selection, which allows for the identification of superior individuals based on their genotype. And this can also lead to the identification of genes responsible for important agronomic traits that breeders might want to incorporate into their germplasm. So now let's get into the GAPIT software. So GAPIT uses R, which is an environment for statistical computing. It uses three different methods, EMMA, Efficient Mixed Model Association, CMLM, which is Compressed Mixed Linear Model, and P3D, which is Population Parameters Previously Determined. Along with this, it uses six libraries that can be downloaded from R. We'll get into these in the next step. So first of all, we need to uh, download the R software. And the software can be downloaded uh, to any of your browser that you're using. And so I'm going to be using Safari. And I'm just going to type in r-project.org. OK. And this is going to go to their website. And under download, you just uh, click the CRAN mirror, and this will direct you to a uh, different download link based on your location. So, for example, I am Canadian, so I'll pick a Canadian link. Let's pick the University of Toronto one. And then you can download R uh, depending on what kind of computer you have. Open the R, okay? So all we really need to do is import our data into R, and the package itself will uh, process those data. So in total, GAPA will require uh, six libraries. We will go over how to install these libraries and why these libraries are important uh, individually.
The very first library is a uh, mode test. Um, so we can download the mode test library uh, by typing into the following two commands. I will include these commands in a separate file so you don't need to worry about it right now. So the first command, okay. Run it. So at the bottom part, you can see uh, the first part of installing it's completed, and then you can run the second one. Okay, so oh, so this this package is very important because uh, it's used for your multiple hypothesis testing. For GWAS nowadays, you can have tens and thousands of markers. So at a significance threshold of zero point zero five, out of twenty markers, you might have one significant association just by chance. So in order to bypass that problem, we need to download this package, and this package will use a method called false discovery rate, and this is a permutation analysis that will adjust your threshold value for multiple hypothesis testing, and this can control and reduce the number of false positive. And the next package we'll download is uh, gplots, and again, you just copy and paste the comments, and then you run it. This package is pretty important because Gapids utilize this package uh, to plot different graphs that will be generated for your analysis. For example, Gap Gapid will generate graph for your phenotype diagnosis to illustrate the distribu distribution of your phenotype. So when you install this package, R will ask you which creme mirror you're using. Why is it not asking me that question? Okay, maybe I should type an A here. It's downloading. The next package we'll install is your LD heat map package. Okay. So you will again copy your um, your code, run it again. So what this package does is that it will produce a graphical display of uh, pairwise linkage disequilibrium measurement between single nucleotide polymorphism. And that uh, graph can be useful for some study that's interested in looking at linkage disequilibria. Ne next package we'll download is the genetic package. Again, copy the code, run it. And now it's finished downloading. And this package basically handles the genetic data. It calculates your allele frequency. It indicates how much homo or heterozygotes there is. And also it tests for, again, tests for linkage disequilibria. Uh, so basically, it is just a package required by R to handle your uh, population genetic calculation. And the next package we have is our ENM, REML. -E and again, you copy the code, you run it. And it's done. So uh, this package uh, help us solve the uh, mixed model uh, we generated for GWAS with the uh, covariance structure that we uh, we have input into our model. And then use the EMMA algorithm. So the last package we have to download is our scatterplot 3D. Can you copy the code and you run it? And what this package does is that it is generate any plot that is 3D that is generated by Gapit. So previously we had a package that's used to generate 2D plots, and this package just help us generate 3D plots. So once you load the sixth package, we'll need to import these uh, package into our R environment by typing the following lines one by one. So again, we have downloaded this package already. We just need to import it. And then you do so by saying, OK, library. This is your library. And then your package is called mult test. So you run it So to import your package. And now you have all your package uh, imported into your R environment. And then now you can install the Gapit package. Copy and paste these two codes, and you run them. Okay. Second line, basically update your Gapit package uh, for a new uh, EMMA library.
So the next step is to establish a working directory in R. And then this directory should be where you store all your data sets, um, or your phenotypic data, your genotypic data. And for the purpose of this exercise, I generated a simple folder, folder called Gapit. We'll just use the following directory. Um, so here, the directory. And this directory will also be where your results will be at. So, so basically, you just type in set working directory. And in a bracket, uh, just indicate where your directory will be. So for me, I'm putting it on desktop in a folder called Gapit. Okay. And then you just run the code. And now your directory is set. So the, so before we move on to the next step, uh, we need to have our phenotypic data and our genotypic data in a format that Gapin can recognize. Um, so I have chosen to use the Gapit tutorial data set to, use your, to illustrate what kind of format that Gapit needs. So for the phenotypic data, you should have your variety. Uh, so variety. 4,226, and then for the next few columns, it should be your phenotypic data. For example, we have our ear heights, we have our ear diameters. Uh, so this is how you should format your uh, phenotypic data in order for GAPA to recognize it. You can usually generate this uh, table by using Excel and then later convert it uh, to a tag text format where GAPIT can recognize it. So in order to import your phenotypic data, you should have your phenotypic data in the working folder that we established earlier. And then you can, um, uh, you can input these code, read table, and the uh, name of your file. So for me, I use ndp on, underscore traits.txt, and then click run to import your file. But the format of genotypic data is called HMP format. It's a half map format. Uh, and it's a very usual format for storing any genotypic data. For, for the first 11 columns, uh, it's basically just displaying attributes of your SNFs. And the remaining, uh, shows, uh, the remaining shows the nucleotide observed for each uh, variety, for each SNFs. So, the first, so what you really need is, uh, is only three columns. It's your first column, which display your uh, SNF name. Your chromosome column, which display where the chromosome, which um, on which chromosome the SNP is located, and also your position. So this is your physical position of the these SNPs on your chromosome. So all you really need is these three columns, and the rest you can basically input as uh, an A uh, to save you some time. And then of course you need your genotypic data uh, for each variety on. Um, on these columns. You just need to input these code to import your uh, genotypic data. So again, my G and a read table and the name of your genotypic data and it's a half HMP format in a text file format. And then you run this code to import it. Now you have imported both the phenotypic and genotypic data. We can now run Gapit using the following code uh, at highlighted on my screen. Okay, so for principal components, we set it as three because we're not inputting our own kinship or population structure for this analysis. So when, um, so you would just put it as three when you don't have your own kin kinship data. So again, you highlight those code and you run them. And you can, on the uh, bottom wing window, you can see that Gapit is running. Um, and it usually takes about five or ten minutes uh, for Gapit to finish running. Earlier on, I uh, talked about running Gapit um, and letting Gapit generate your own kinship matrix. But for people that want to use a different algorithm to generate kinship matrix or their population structures, this is how you can import your kinship matrix and population structure into Gapit. So for kinship matrix, you need to have a format uh, illustrate uh, like this one. You need to have your varieties name on your first column, and the rest is basically uh, a square symmetric matrix. Ma matrix. So it tells you, okay, uh, variety one, the relatedness, the, the kinship value with variety two is 0 
A837. So that's so this is the format you need to use if you want to import your teacher matrix into GapIt. And if you want to import your population structure as a covariate into GapIt, uh, this is the format that you need to use. So again, your first column is your variety, and then Q1, Q2, Q3 is your covari covariates uh, or your population structure. And for people that uh, doesn't have a software that they use to generate population structure, I would recommend Structure. Uh, it will it will help you generate uh, those covariate reading. In order to include kinship matrix and population structure in your analysis, you do need to add in a few more lines of code. Um, so after you put in your genotypic data, you would import your kinship data again. It's my kinship, and then you would read table and then show and then direct uh, direct gap it to where your kinship data is at. And you would also import your covariate data. So this is your uh, population structure. Again, my CV, read table, and then the location of where your uh, covariate data or where your population stru structure data is uh, is located. And then you would you would uh, copy paste uh, and run these two codes. And when you run your gapit, you will run it with a different code. And you would set your kinship matrix as my kinship, and your covariate as my covariates. And this would help Gapit run GWAS uh, using your kinship matrix and using the population structure that you have calculated. Uh, after you run these code, uh, your Gapit will generate some output in the folder that you have designated earlier on. So Gapit produces a series of output files that are saved in two formats. Um, all of the tabular results are saved in CSV files and all of the graphics are saved as PDFs. So once you close R, you can open up the Gapit folder and all of your output is here. Um, and as you can see, there are a lot of different types of output, but today we're only going to cover four. So the first one we're going to talk about is the PC plots. So if you go through your output, you can see that they have multiple PC plots depending on how many traits you used. And so today we're going to look at year height versus PC. And this is the output you get. So you get a 2D version of your PC components as well as a 3D model. So the second type of file that we're going to look at is your, um, actually your association table that you get. So that comes in a CSV file um, and it shows up as your GWAS results. So we're going to look at your diameter in this case. So you'll get a um, Excel file that shows you uh, the SNP, the chromosome, uh, the position on the chromosome, um, its associated p-value. Um, it's minor allele frequency, or MAF, um, the knobs, and then you get the R-square of the model uh, excluding the SNPs, and then the R-square of the model including the SNPs, and then your false discovery rate adjusted p-values. Okay, the third output that you look at is the Manhattan plot, and in this case it looks like this. Um, so the line here represents the LOD score that Gapit um, actually calculated for you. Um, so the scatter plot basically summarizes your GWAS results. So the x-axis shows you the genomic position of each SNP, and the y-axis shows you the log of the p-value that um, they got from the GWAS model. Um, so large peaks in the Manhattan plot, or any uh, point that's above um, this LOD score line um, shows a strong association uh, between that position or that SNP and the trait of interest. So in this case for ear diameter, um, there's a trait on chromosome 4 that has a strong association or could be a potentially significant QTL um, for ear diameter. 
So the last output we're looking at is a kinship matrix um, that shows up as a heat map, and Gapit uses it to uh, calculate your GWAS model. And the other thing to note about Gapit is that the kinship matrices can't be um, made unless if your sample size is over 1,000, so just keep that in mind. So we hope you learned how to conduct association mapping using Gapit software. If you have any further questions, you can go to mazegenetics.net slash gapit and they'll give you the user manual that you can download for free. The user manual is 51 pages and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions including the